Good morning, my friends. I'm Clover. Today is October 19th, 2024, and we are solving yesterday's gas puzzle together. It is called Not a Slow Thermo, and it is not a slow thermo. It is, in fact, a lovely quadruple Sudoku by Philip Newman. Let's have a look. So standard Sudoku rules apply. So we're going to be placing the digits one through nine once each in each row, each column, and each outlined three by three region. And then we also have some white circles in the grid at the intersections of four cells. And when you see one of those white circles, the digits that are written in the circle have to appear at least as many times as they're written there in the four cells around the circle. So for example, this one has two threes written in it. That means that in those four cells surrounding the circle, there have to be two threes and then also a four and a five. This one just has a five, and all that means is that there has to be a five somewhere in the four cells surrounding the circle. This one, it's got a five. Technically, it could even have two fives in the four cells surrounding it, as long as there is at least one. Now, where we're going to start is with these clues that have repeated digits, because there are really only two configurations to make this happen. We could either have a one and a one here and here, or we could have a one and a one here and here because they can't see each other. Either way, the digits around it can be marked in. One, two, and three. Two, three, and four. Three, four, and five. One, eight, and nine. And I'm just doing this because later on in the solve, I will simply be able to remove some of these digits and clean up and kind of reveal what we're going to end up um, kind of reducing our options to. Okay, so let's have a look at what we're dealing with here. I remember really enjoying this one in testing. This is a very, very cleverly constructed puzzle. This is a Philip Newman classic. Well, not a classic um, <laughs> in the sense of classic Sudoku, but classic in the sense of a classic Philip puzzle. So the first thing that stands out to me here is that I know I have a three in both of these rows because I need two threes surrounding the quadruple. That lets me eliminate three from here and also from here, which means three has to be down here. And I also need a four down here because I, there's a four in both rows here. So this is going to be a three, four pair. This is going to be a two, four pair. The two, four pair reduces this to a one and this to a three. And so I've essentially finished this quadruple. The three in turn kind of bounces back and simplifies this quadruple. Now I can eliminate my four here, so this is a three, five pair, making this a three, four pair. And that's all I can do up there for this moment. But let's do the same thing down here. So here I'm going to have two sevens. That eliminates seven from these two pairs of digits. And just like we did up at the top, we're going to simplify this and we're going to simplify this. And now the six, eight pair bounces back and shows us how to resolve this quadruple. And then the seven we just placed bounces back and shows us how to resolve this quadruple. Okay, so we can eliminate a six here and that means we can eliminate a five here. And now we're gonna take a look at these two five clues. This is a highly symmetrical puzzle. This five has to have a five surrounding it, so there must be a five in one of these three cells. Therefore, this can't be a five, so that's a three, and that's going to be enough to give us the rest of this quadruple. Similarly, this can't be a five, because otherwise there couldn't be a five surrounding these cells. So that's going to be a seven. This will be a seven, a six, and a five. Okay, if we look at these columns, we have five, eight, and nine remaining. This is not going to be a nine because there's a nine in the row currently. So we know one of these cells has to be a nine, which lets us eliminate nine here. So now that's a one, two pair. That makes this a two, nine pair. We'll do something similar in this column. These cells are going to have to contain one, two, and five. This can't be a one. So there's a one in one of these cells to put a one in the column. There's no one there. And therefore there is no nine right there. So now with that more information, we can look at row three and row seven. These are going to be six, seven, and nine. And that will not be a seven because there's a seven in the column already. And these are going to be one, three, and four. And this will not be a three because there is a three in the column already. Now what? Let's have a quick look at this central region. 
So we need a 5 in one of these four cells, and we also need a 5 in one of these four cells. The only way to place a 5 in the central region to satisfy both of those is to put the 5 right there. That means there is a 5 in one of those positions. There's also going to be a 5 in one of these positions to satisfy this quadruple, which means because there's not a 5 here, there's going to be a 5 in one of these positions. And we can do the same kind of pencil marking up here. There's not a 5 there, so there's a 5 in one of those two cells. All right, now we need to place, what was my next move here? I see a few different things that I can do, but I'm wondering what will kind of give us the most clarity here. So let's go ahead. Oh, actually we can place fives here because the only way to put a five around this quadruple is to put it here. And the only way to put a five around this one is to put it here. And that's going to give us some momentum. There we go. That'll take care of those cells by Sudoku. And now we only have one position left for those two fives. And now we only have one position left for those two fives. So we have finished placing all of our fives in the grid, and that's going to give us some momentum to carry on with the puzzle. So now in this region, we need a six, a seven, and an eight. And in this one, we need a two, a three, and a four. Here we're going to need a 6, 7, and 9, and we already have a 6 and 7 in this column, so we're going to place a 9, and that's going to resolve this quad. And then I'm going to put a 6 and a 7 here. And where was I going with that? Okay, it's 6, 7, and 8 there. And here, mirroring that, I'm going to need a 1, 3, and 4. I have a 3 and 4 here, so there's a 1 making those twos, making that a nine, and making this a one. And now these cells are going to be six, seven, eight, nine in some combination. These are going to be one, two, three, four. That can't be a one. That cannot be a nine. All right, now if we look at this row, this needs to be two, three, or four. If we look at this row, this needs to be six, seven, or eight. Mm, this can't be an eight. This can't be a two because those digits are already present in their rows. These have to be, to finish row four, some combination of one, two, six, and seven. We already have a one, two, and seven in this column, which makes that a six and takes care of this. And similarly here, we need three, four, eight, and nine. We already have three, eight, and nine in column six, so that's going to be a four. And that's now a three, that becomes an eight, nine pair. That leaves me with three and seven to finish the region, which simplifies quite quickly. Now, the only remaining digit that can go here, because we have a 1 and 2, and then 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, is going to be a 6, and that should take care of this entire region by Sudoku. And I believe it does, and that also kind of bounces up here and takes care of this region, and I'm just doing classic Sudoku at this point. I need to place a 6 in this region, it's going to go there, that will be my 8. I have a four, so that's going to simplify. Whoops. And I think that that is all you need to know about Philips not a slow thermo. Sure enough, it wasn't a slow thermo. It was a very quick and elegant quadruples puzzle. Hope you enjoyed that one. I've been Clover. If you want to check it out yourself, there is a link to solve this puzzle yourself in the description below this video. And I will see you again in three days.